I love air dry clay projects and I love clay pins. In this video I will show you how I make my pins. How I cut, shape, dry, paint, glaze and make them into gifts. You can use the templates that I've included here that I designed or you can look around for some inspiration and decide what kind of clay pins you'd like to make. I begin my design with just sketching out in pencil and then I'll go over the top in a marker pen and then I cut these out as my templates to use to cut the clay. With this batch of pins I don't actually have an actual theme for them, they're just random set of pins that I like and I'm going to theme them together by taking a colour palette and painting them all in that same colour palette. You can download this sheet with 14 of my designs on. So now I've cut my templates, I'm, we're ready to start with the clay. I typically use a DAS air dry clay and I work on a smooth tile. You can also use a piece of glass or you could use parchment paper. We'll also need a sharp scalpel type knife or an X-Acto knife. I can't find the actual barrel of mine so I've got the blade here. I don't advise doing that really. But um, the first thing we need to do is just give the clay a good roll together, condition the clay and make it soft and then we're ready to roll. My son's actually opposite me here just doing his own clay with some terracotta colour clay. So. He's got the rolling pin at the moment, rolling his out, so I couldn't use that on my white clay. So I do recommend using a little um, rolling pin if you can, but don't worry, you can always use a glass. So I take my templates and I simply place them on, take your knife and very carefully just cut around the whole edge. As you see here, sometimes it's easier to cut larger and then cut out the extra details after that. And as I go, I keep cleaning all the little um, bits off my blade, off the knife, so that um, they don't drag through. And so another way I cut some of my pieces, I might have a selection of cutters that aren't necessarily the shape I need, but they've got shapes within them that I could use. And so this one, I use part of the heart to cut this little lollipop tree out. So it just gives that nice clean part of the semicircle there that I can use. So if you've got some um, shapes that you could use, then see what little designs you could actually come up with and make out of them. So again, just cut away the excess with a knife. A nice sharp knife to get a nice clean edge. But do be careful of course. And then what we can do is just smooth off the edges. So if we get some water, we can take a little dab on our finger. We don't want to get it soaked, we just want it to be slightly wet and we can smooth out all of the edges. You don't need to worry about getting it completely smooth because we can take some fine sandpaper to at the end once they're fully dry. And another way I like to use a cutter is to get a piece of cling film, cling wrap and then if you get your cutter, a nice round cutter, press down on it as usual and then the cling wrap just gives that lovely soft edge around the edge so that makes some really, really nice pins, some nice brooches when um, we do it like that and so what I will do with this one just take a bit of water, I will leave it exactly where it is and just smooth it off. You can add the pin backs at this stage. Mine haven't arrived yet so I haven't got them. But So you just turn your piece upside down and add them in. And then if you want to add like a keyring effect you can put these pins in. I just leave these ones upside down so that they dry flat and don't bend as you dry them. Alternatively, if you've got some safety pins, why not try that and see how that works too. 
with the cut out clay just roll it all back give it another um, condition and then roll it out again and cut out as many as you can. Time to relax and let them dry. Leave them to dry overnight or consult the packet to see how long your clay takes. You can see the clay has dried when it actually turns white and there's no grey patches left in the middle. So for this rather thicker one, it just is a little more grey in the middle, so we'll leave that to dry for a little longer. And then we can take some fine sandpaper and sand them off. Just make sure you're in a well-ventilated room and you catch the dust and you can always wear a mask as well. Then take a soft cloth to them and remove all the dust. I've now got some white acrylic paint and I've turned all of my pins and badges over and I'm going to give them a coat of white paint on the backs and I'm going to give them two coats of paint to just give them some extra strength and extra durability. Let the paint fully dry between layers. Now that the backs are all painted we can paint the front and the sides. So I make this little contraption here where I've got a bottle top and some plasticine and I'm simply just going to attach them to the top and I can hold on to this while I paint. I recommend actually using some white plasticine if you've got it. Or you can just paint them flat on your board. And now I do the same again but we're painting the front and the sides with one layer of acrylic paint. And I'll repeat that for all of the pins. Choose the colours that you'd like to use for your pins and just mix them up nicely on a colour palette. I've got a nice pink here and I'll show you my little trick to keep the paint nice and wet for another time because this is acrylic paint still. And so I put a bit of tissue on the bottom of an airtight container, then a piece of greaseproof paper and then just make sure the tissue's damp and then you can place this inside on top of the parchment or greaseproof paper and then put your lid on and that will keep um, for a little while longer and won't go dry with it being acrylic paint. And so then just paint all of your pins. I like to do a nice neat edge around the edges leaving the back white. I find my little contraption with the plasticine works out really quite nicely. And then go round with the detail using a nice fine paintbrush and we're just going to paint all of the details in. If you'd rather paint them down on the board then do do that, I just find this easier to be able to hold it up here like this, but it's not for everybody. So then go in with some detail, this was our nice little lollipop tree, I'm just simply taking my time and enjoying the painting process, making him into a little rainbow tree. Here I've got some pinks and some greys. Once you have let each coat of acrylic paint dry, then pick up some more paint and give it another coat. If you feel you need to, you could give it a third coat, but I tend to, tend to think two coats is fine. So with my little fox pattern, I just want to take a pencil and draw on the eye, um, the face positions there so that I find it easier to go in with the paintbrush. As I say, you can find all of my templates in the description below and you can have a go at making my pins or design your own. And either way, I'd love to see them. So you can go on Instagram and you can hashtag Red Rocking Bird Make and then I'll take a look. 
I'd love to see them and see what you've made. So carefully in detail just go in and paint paint your designs. Occasionally they might fall off the plaster scene like it did there but just stick them back on. And occasionally you might have some little mistakes that you make. And you know what, you can go back in like here, I could go back in with some white, pen, white paint and neaten that up. Or I can just go back over and change it to a little more grey. Just enjoy the process. So I tend to do one colour at a time and just work through all the different pins rather than making just one pin. So I'll do all the pink and then I'll do all the grey and then all of the navy blue. Once you've left the acrylic paint to dry you can add in some fine details with a permanent marker pen but it doesn't always work out so well when you come to glaze them at the end. So I actually recommend it's quite nice to use a really fine paintbrush add a little bit of extra water to your acrylic and so that it's a bit easier to flow and then add some of your nice details in still using the acrylic so that when we varnish it we don't come across any problems and so just keep adding some little details in and enjoying making some really cute pins and with this brooch one I did actually use a marker pen and a little straight edge and I drew those lines on there. Once everything's been left to dry fully we can move on to the glaze or the varnish. And so I tend to use like a varnish spray, this lacquer craft spray, two to three or even four very thin layers are best. And with this one I used the marker pen and using the spray varnish really made it run. So I needed another alternative so I used this Liquitex gloss medium to see if that was any better. And it was with some of the marker pens but not the other marker pens. So the best thing is always try it on a discrete bit of the pin or on a scrap bit of clay. So just brush it on nice and neatly and let them dry fully and give them a couple of coats and for the pins that I didn't add any any of the actual pins to I'm just taking some really strong super glue and I'm going to attach my pins that have just arrived in the post to the um, to the backs and just let them dry fully you could always use a really strong epoxy glue as well and then they're re nearly ready to use. These backs that I ordered have a really tiny bit to attach to so I'm going to order some more with a bigger surface to attach to the pin because I do think that will be better and I recommend that too. I'll attach mine to a little card and they're ready to give away as a gift. You can put them in a cellophane envelope too and they're just gorgeous. I hope you do give them a go. Please do um, subscribe and hit the like button and comment and let me know how you get on. And do come and see some more of my crafts and thank you for watching. Bye for now.